the path to be built into a holy temple. You can finally see Christ. Reverend Dr. Holly Namo Hyun, United Methodist Church. This video is made by Reverend Dr. Holly Namo Lee, who is a minister of the United Methodist Church. She got a degree of Doctor of Ministry at Claremont Theological Seminary in California. She is an executive director of Menowan Ministries. She carries a healing ministry. She is an author of 40 books and led 1,000 revival services and over 200 seminars for ministers. Now she lives in California with her husband, Reverend Peter Yongtek Lee. She is the fourth daughter of Dr. Sung Bum Yun, former president of Methodist Theological University in Seoul, Korea. I had a dream last night. I was living in the house of my deceased sister. My niece, who lives in Canada, came suddenly and said her mother told her to live in this house and go to work from here. Since she showed up without any prior notice, I frantically looked for a room for her to stay, but there was no available room. In the midst of my panic, there was an earthquake, which lasted for over 10 minutes, the longest earthquake I have ever experienced in my whole life. The earthquake felt like the house would be engulfed totally. As soon as the earthquake was over, many guests rushed to the house. Some of them were our previous church members, and they were also some people who had experienced blessings through my ministry. But I was in my nightgown and without any makeup on. I looked for my clothes to change, but could not find any. Finally, I got a hold of my sister's wardrobe and wanted to change but they were full of people in the living room, downstairs, and even in the bathrooms. All night long, I was in a panic in my dream. It was because everything happened before I was prepared. My niece's arrival without notice, the earthquake, and the sudden visitation of many guests. Since I was in my night clothes and had no makeup on, my shame ran to an extreme. It made me think about how I would meet Jesus if he came when I was not ready. If he comes like a thief, would I have a room for him? Would there be a room ready for him to stay? Would I have my makeup on when I see him? The makeup in a dream represents one spiritual readiness, and I have never had such an embarrassing dream in my whole life. The dream really made me wonder if we are waiting for the Lord's return without any preparation. The Lord asked me, when you buy a house, what do you look for? I said, first, we check how many bedrooms there are, and we see the living room, dining room, kitchen, storage, and the garden. We also check the neighborhood and the school district before we decide. Just like the way you choose a house, I look for the essential criteria for my sanctuary to reside in you. As there are certain conditions necessary for people to live, there is a necessary and sufficient condition for divine being to live. The house of the spirit is the house of salvation. And in order to become the house of salvation, there are 12 necessary elements. He said he will explain in three sections, the way, the truth, and the life. Last time he explained about the way. The faith which led you to go into the gate began from hearing, but the moment you pass through the gate, you will see the altar of burnt offerings and the wash basin. From here on, your faith will grow from what you see. Once you can see the altar of burnt offerings and the wash basin, the altar and the wash basin at the holy place in your heart will begin to be built. The fence and the gate of the tabernacle are already built in you. As I have said, going into the gate is the foundation, and the contents of the foundation are the four books in the gospel. Everything is comprised of one layer, but faith is comprised of four layers. Even if just one layer were missing, the foundation of faith would shake. Now, let us try to build the altar of burnt offerings and the wash basin in your holy place. The meaning of the altar of burnt offerings being built in your heart is that your sins are forgiven by my death and you can enter into my sanctuary. 
the altar of burnt offerings is still placed in the courtyard of the tabernacle. But in order for you to go into the sanctuary in the most holy place, you must pass through the altar of my death. I was offered as a sacrifice. All your sins were imputed on me, and I was offered as a burnt offering sacrifice. Here, you will meet the message of the Gospel of Mark and Luke. The Gospel of Mark preaches about me, Jesus, who came to die as an atonement sacrifice, and the Gospel of Luke preaches about me, sinless God who came as a human being to die on the cross. Since humans committed sins from the beginning, they had to be killed, but instead they sacrificed sheep or bulls as atonement offerings. But that is not enough to receive forgiveness. They had to find a sinless human being as a pure sacrifice, but there is no such person. That is why God chose me, the one without sins, as their sacrifice. Sinless divine being. But since the sacrifice had to be a human, he sent me to the world as a human being in order to be crucified. Because there was no one else who fit under such qualifications. It was the event which fulfilled God's righteousness as well as God's love. It satisfies God's righteousness that a sinner must die for his sins, which was achieved by my death, and it satisfied God's love to save all his children by my death. How can a debtor with penalty for sins pay for it? The debt, which is the penalty for sins, can be paid only by someone who does not have the penalty of his own. It is the similar principle. When you can believe this, the altar of burnt offerings for sacrifice is built in your heart. There has to be the altar of burnt offerings for sacrifice in the holy place. Without it, you cannot encounter God who is sinless and holy. You have to be considered righteous in order to face God. Otherwise, you will die the moment you see God because of your sins. A sinner cannot enter in such a strong presence. The communion commemorates this event. Now, you have become the people of the new covenant through my flesh and blood, and have been set free from sins. When you can see this altar of burnt offerings and believe the fact that my sacrifice on this altar was the atonement for you, you begin to build the altar of burnt offerings in your heart. Since all these were achieved through my merits and not yours, you will experience my grace. The experience of grace, which is priceless. <laughs> You have passed the fence into the gate and came to see the altar of burnt offerings. Even though faith comes from hearing, you can see my sacrifice at the altar of burnt offerings. From this point on, you meet me from what you see. You see me as a sacrifice. You know your sins are forgiven. You find out everything is achieved by my merits and not yours and you find out you have come to the gate of salvation for free. You will cry because you are deeply moved from this grace. As you sing at the cross, at the cross where I first saw the light, you will be deeply moved and grateful. The cost is impossible to pay back because it is the price for my redemption, a price which you could never pay back even in one million years. How can you assess the price for God's redemption? Therefore, do not try to pay back. Do not compare with others either. Christ is the grace. You have not received it because of you, but you have received it because of me. Therefore, do not try to pay back, just enjoy. Since it is a gift, be thankful and enjoy. Grow into a person of faith in order for this grace not to be in vain. That is what I want. If it were possible for you to pay back, I would have made it that way. When you cannot put a price on your own child's ransom, do you think you could pay back for God's price of redemption? Could you pay for the sins of all mankind? What is important now is that you do not stay in grace 
but move toward the wash basin. To summarize simply, these steps of being built as a holy temple is a necessary process for you to come toward the Lord, purified and holy from your sin. Without that process, I cannot reside in you, nor you can see me. Taking care of the original sin at the altar of burnt offerings, repenting daily sins and the intentional sins at the wash basin, and entering the holy temple. These are the steps of sanctification for the inner person. In a simple word, this is your path to reach holiness. Now then, let's build the wash basin in you. Lord, thank you. I anticipate the next lecture. Today's teaching about enjoying grace, even though it may seem easy, it is difficult to follow. We always feel indebted to you and try to repay. We compare with others and feel they have received more grace and complain about it. We tend to think that we deserve your grace for something we have done. We can also become judgmental towards others, considering them not worthy to receive your grace. We cannot practice what we know theoretically. And oftentimes, we do not give full credit for its true value since we have received it for free. Grant us the wisdom to become the architects of heaven to build a house of faith and a house of salvation on the solid foundation of faith so that your grace of salvation may not be in vain. Thank you. The Heavenly Newsroom English video will now be uploaded on another channel too. The channel's name is News from Heaven and is linked to a Yunnamok TV banner. Search Holly Namok Lee on YouTube and you'll find it. Thank you. In Hebrew, Menua is an adjective that describes being restful. We use the term Menua as a noun. Please hit the subscribe button for Yunnamok TV, News from Heaven. Thank you for watching this video.